Hi, I'm Srikant Pragada. In this video, I explain how to create a Maven project that uses JPA to talk to Oracle database. So what are the steps we need to take and what are the files we need to create? Let's get started. First, I'm using Eclipse and go to file new and you find maven project and if you don't find maven project no issue you can go to project and you can select maven project from the list so there once you go to project from there you can select maven and select maven project either way so go ahead and then for maven project we need to provide some details to start with, I need to give my default workspace. So I'm using workspace C colon backslash Java. This is my workspace. Okay. I say use that as the default workspace. And also I want to create a simple project. So I don't want to select any archetype because Maven does provide some predefined structures. I don't need them. I want a simple Java project. So go ahead, click on next. And here I'm giving something like group ID, which is typically your company name. Artifact ID, I say JPA Oracle. I'm just giving name like that. And these things are fine. And the name is again JPA Oracle. Just that's it. You don't need to give remaining details. Just click on finish. It is going to create a JPA project. Well, once the project is created, you can go open that project explorer. So here, if it is not there, you just open the project explorer. There we are. We got JPA Oracle project. The most important thing in Maven is your palm file, the project object model so open that and we need to provide some dependencies so i have to provide two dependencies so i'm going to bring them and here are those two dependencies i need to have so i'm just dumping it here the first dependency is about uh, oracle jdbc driver the second dependency is uh, Hibernate. You can use any version of Hibernate, but depending on the version, the code is slightly changing. Especially if you are using Hibernate 6.3, something like that, it is using internally Jakarta, not Java X. So the package names have changed. So you need to use the new package names if you are using later versions of Hibernate. Otherwise, it's one and the same. Now, apart from the dependencies, I also need to provide properties. So I'm creating properties. It's basically to tell Maven, I want to use Java version 20. And by default, it is using Java 1.8, but I want to change it to 20. So go ahead, save this. And when you save this, it is going to download all the required jar files. And you can see a new folder is created called Maven dependencies. And if you expand, you find all the jar files. So these are the jar files Maven has downloaded from internet because we want Oracle driver and Hibernate uh, entity manager you can as well give hibernate core if you want so entity manager or core that's fine now what next you need to update your project so go to your project right click and when you right click you are going to find an option called maven select maven and then you need to say update project so here update project, select that. This is the project to be updated with the new Maven details, like a new palm file. 
just click on OK. And when you click on OK, it's going to update and you can see your Java version changed from 1.8 to 20. That's it. This is done. Now what next? And if you want to connect to Oracle database from this project, we need to bring what is called as persistence.xml because when we use JPA, we need to use that. By the way, I'm using JPA, but internally, JPA is implemented using Hibernate. JPA is a standard API. Hibernate is called the implementer. Hibernate provides implementation for JPA. So to use JPA, we have to go to this resources folder, create a folder in that called meta INF. And in this meta INF, we need to place persistence.xml. So we need to place a file called persistence.xml. So I'm going to bring that. I don't want you to type all this. So it should be in meta INF. So here is persistence.xml. Now have a look at this. This is persistence.xml where I'm saying I'm using persistence 2.0 and that's enough. If you want, you can upgrade that to 3.0. And then a couple of other things also change. Okay. Now, the first and foremost is a name given to your persistence unit. The name is Oracle. That is the name you want to have for this persistence unit. And then we talk about who is providing this persistence. So Hibernate is the persistence provider. That's important. And then we are talking about some properties to connect to Oracle. So what is the Oracle driver? What is the Oracle URL? Well, I assume you already have Oracle in your system or accessible to you. And I assume you know how to connect to Oracle using JDBC. And the same URL you have to give here. I'm connecting to a database called PDB, which is coming along with uh, our Express Edition of Oracle. So I'm using actually Oracle 21, but you can use any version of Oracle starting from 12C. And you need to make sure that you have this database. If you don't have this, change the URL accordingly. And then I'm talking about the user demo, password demo. Please change them according to your system. And the next most important thing is the dialect. We have to inform to Hibernate what kind of database we are using. And I'm saying I'm using Oracle 12C. That's good enough. You can use uh, Oracle 12C or any version higher than 12C with this. And then I'm talking about how to deal with uh, Hibernate's uh, DDL. That means, should Hibernate create DDL commands to create tables or alter tables when the domain model, the classes are not matching the tables? Now I'm saying update. So if the table is not present, it will be created. If the table for the entity is already present, then it is not going to do anything. And I also want to simply display the SQL commands created by Hibernate. That's it. These are the details we need to provide. But this is a very, very important file. A mistake in this would mean you just cannot connect it to Oracle. So please double check what you're doing. And this entire project will be made available to you through my blog. I will put the blog URL in the description of this video. Okay, what next? So step one, form file. We updated that. 
Step two, we created persistence.xml precisely in this location. Please be careful regarding the location. What next? Let's start creating entities. I want to create an entity called course. Let's go and I say class and the package is going to be entities and I'm giving the class as course. And that's it. And this is a class and I'm going to put some code for that. And all that I need to do is say this is an entity. So let's go and provide those two and import. You have a choice. You can select either Java X persistence dot entity or Hibernate annotations. I prefer to go with JPA because I'm using JPA. I prefer to use JPA. Well, then we need to provide other details. So I already have the code. So I'm going to dump here. There we are. So I'm talking about uh, ID, which is primary key. And I also want this to be automatically generated. Oracle starting from 12C is supporting identity column. So in the database dialect, we already specified we are using Oracle 12C. So this is fine. And then we talk about title and then we talk about the fee. Those are the properties of our entity. And for this, the corresponding columns in the table will be created. And here we are talking about the table name and I can give a slightly different name if I want. I say my courses and just give a different table name. Okay, I want to show you how JPA using Hibernate is internally creating tables. Done, this is done. Now step two, we are going to write a small program and you can put it anywhere you like here or somewhere else. So I'm just putting everything in one place. I say add course and this contains main. So turn this on, click on finish. And this is where you write the code. And here is the code. Import and format. The most important thing is you are creating entity manager factory by using this name and this name is coming from persistence.xml and if you go back and see that that's where you have given a name called oracle for persistence unit. This name is what we are using. Okay, now go back and do that create entity manager, create a course. And then these steps are to start a transaction, persist that object and commit the transaction. And you need to close entity manager and entity manager factory. Make sure all of them are properly closed. That's it. You're done. You're ready to run. And as this table is not present, Hibernate is going to internally create the table and you can see the commands it generates. So, so we got the entity, we got the configuration files in the right shape and we are all set to go and run this add course. Let me run this. So it is going to do this. There we are. It created a table because this table is not already present. So it's creating table with ID as identity column, fee title are two other columns and the primary key constraint is used to say this ID is primary key. And then it did proceed to insert a row into the table. ID is auto generated, fee and title are provided by us. So we got a table created and a row inserted. And if you run this with a different uh, 
title different fee it will insert one more row so let us say we change this to something like spring boot and see what happens and i'm changing it to some course fee let me save everything and run and you will see only insert command executed because the table is already present that's it now let's write an another program to list whatever we have in this table so i'm going to create one more program and i'm going to call this as list courses and this also contains main and every time you want to use jpa you have to use the entity manager factory followed by entity manager so here is the code that is going to create the entity manager factory then entity manager and this is where we are talking about getting the data from course and please remember this is jpql and also you have to remember this is only the name of the entity this is not the table name you know the table name is my courses but this is just entity name and i want to create a query execute the query and then take one row at a time that means one row from the table will become one course object and i want to display the title and the course fee so this is how it gives you a list of objects now save everything go ahead and run this so when you run this it is writing select command and it is displaying whatever data we have in the table so it retrieved everything from courses table and we are able to display the details that's it so this is how you can create a maven project with eclipse that uses jpa internally using hibernate connects to oracle and here we have the details regarding oracle driver oracle url etc so you have to give them accurately depending on your system depending on your scenario you can change the url but you must know what is the correct url that's it this is all that you need to do and the code for this will be made available in the blog i will post the url related to the blog in the description of this video i hope you learned something new all the best keep learning